<laughs> welcome back, everybody. How are you going to welcome back? Everybody. <laughs> welcome back, everybody. Somebody's excited. I'm back, <laughs> everybody. I'm, I'm sure you all missed me, and so I will fill this void. Welcome to episode, I can't remember, of Unwanted Opinions. It's 16. Episode 16 of Unwanted Opinions. I'm trying not to touch this mic. Don't With your host, me. Magic Matt, Justin, Jelly Justin, Jesse James Fact Checking, Executive Producer Dave, and then our guest today, Ross, behind us on the couch. All right. Have you guys got your phones? <laughs> there he is. <laughs> he is ready to go. What? Why are you out of breath, first of all? <laughs> He's excited. I ran here. Uh, no, I don't have my stuff done, so keep talking. I wasn't breathing as I was talking, which is like, you're not supposed to do that. And it's not unusual for you to do that. Though. It's not unusual. That's We've already had second that Second time this morning. Wow. Yeah, that is the second time this morning. You're I'll wait to share fire. until you guys are done. Uh, I, I'm it. done. Morning time Tom Jones. You know what I'm saying? Morning time Broadcasting Tom Jones. live out of the Workspace Collective down in beautiful mm, so-so Ocala right now yeah. with the way this weather's going. A gloomy. Hey, man. The cold ain't that bad. Okay. The cold's not that bad, but that yeah, one day the, the cold and the it. rain sucked. Yeah, that well, was that was rough. What time? We, yeah, it was cold, it was cold and rainy this morning too. Yeah, I haven't been out of my house a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'll admit well, that. Why not? I have had I've had a baby. Well, yeah, congratulations. Thank you, thank you. A little baby, Matt yeah. Daddy. I'd yeah. like to see more pictures and videos, please. Yeah, I need to I need to start sharing more. I guess. Yeah, I don't know be, if you've uh, heard that term uh, yet. Uh, that's new. Yeah. Uh, your wife has shared a few, which is cool. It's like she hasn't shared a post in nine years, and then yeah, she. she <laughs> awesome. If you think if you think I'm not active on social media, my wife is Lauren is even less active on social media. She's a lurker. Oh yeah, yeah, that's fine. A lurker and a commenter. Yeah, but it's funny because it's like she'll make a post, I'll just share that, or she'll make a post, or you know, vice versa. We just kind of like shared, like yeah. we're just like lazy social media posters, but it works out though. No, I mean, that's great. we have a ton of photos. It's just like you know. We're parents, though. I mean, I, I think that's the thing. Is like, I'm going to need the bigger upgraded phone soon for just photo capacity, I no think. No more iPhone 8? No more <laughs> iPhone 8. I think it's time to uh, upgrade that one, oh, to be honest. Your phone still has a button. I, it is. I still have the 8. That's why. Like a, oh, wow, yeah. Yeah, it has a button. I know you guys haven't seen that in a while. It's been a bit. So I think I'm, I'm going to get one of the new ones, the 14s or whatever. What uh, are we on? 13. 13. 13s. Yeah. Close. Getting, yeah. getting good. Close. You're just getting comfortable, feeling good. And what? In in talking? <laughs> yeah. Right. You haven't stopped. Yeah. Oh, my bad. I'll show up now. Yeah. You guys got something to say? Got sixty minutes to make up two weeks worth of words. <laughs> yeah, right. Who do you think I've been talking to? The baby. Well, yeah, I have been, but she doesn't talk back. So not yet. Not yet. I can't wait. Till she's like, Yo, just chill. <laughs> yeah. I'll be talking and like the, the, yeah, she would just poop on me, and that's about you that's, know, the extent that's what of it. Do. That's what yeah. we'd like to do. So speaking of lurking and commenting, I, I talked a little bit about it in our uh, private chat. I I don't I don't engage in. Um, <laughs> I, I'm not like Ross. I don't engage in social media phone while I'm in the middle of a podcast. He's probably <laughs> yeah, he does look like a cutout. Yeah. <laughs> he does look like a cutout. No, uh, I don't. I don't engage in arguments. Typically speaking, um, hmm. sometimes I'll pose a question and people think that I'm arguing, but I'm genuinely just like, "Oh, I wonder what the the answer is here." It's tone. But I, yeah, but I, I mean, you're reading your own tone into it because I just <laughs> typed it. You're implying one for me, but uh, so I, I, uh, I commented on this. I shared it with you guys yesterday. I commented on this video from the 1950s. And it started off with like a pelican ashtray and this like cool like <laughs> donut maker, and I, then it had like. I started to read your comment or the comments on your comment. Yeah, well, there's one in particular that I really like. Right there, uh, so then all of a sudden it cuts to like this southern hospitality paper holder, which <laughs> yeah. is like a very old school racist like black woman holding paper towels and i was like yo we just gonna skip up all i said was we gonna skip over this paper towel holder that's it started a firestorm right and so there's like all these comments which like okay i i don't think about this because i don't really get involved in these like weird arguments online but beyond that i also learned that be besides just message request on instagram there's hidden message requests yeah, the, aren't those from people who like you don't know? No, message requests are from people that you don't know. Hidden message requests 
are from people that may be um, sending you stuff that you don't want to see. Oh. They've got aggressive language in it or like mm. obvious scams. So I didn't know any of that was available. And I wish, I wish, I wish, I wish, before I just hit delete all, I would have screenshot so I could no. share with you some of the absolute insane responses that I were I was getting. And And not only was I getting people that were like, you woke, you know, but I don't know how to say this politically correct because they're hidden for a reason. Very aggressive language, like honky. Uh, no, 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 no. You, uh, you, you woke like wussy. Okay. Uh, you know, <laughs> cuckold. I don't know. Is that PC? So, I don't know if I can say. That. <laughs> I don't know what that has to do with like what they call what was it like the mammy paper towel holder yeah, the mammy comment? Paper towel. Like, like, how, like how do they go from that to like cuckold? Well, because that's like one of those like. Uh, one of those. Oh, co- I think I get it now. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> that makes yeah. it even funny. Think about it. I just like the one guy that was just like, <laughs> he said, "You're too privileged to type like that." And yeah. I, like, I sat there for a second. And I'm like, "Does he know him?" What? Right. Is he? But no. But it was also one of those things where I'm like, "That's an odd comment." And then like the follow up to that, where the guy was just like, "Are you gatekeep?" Right. Keep typing, you know. And then yeah. it was just like I just started thinking about like, what do people do with their time? But then yeah, people like you make like, like a silly comment, and then like what I meant by it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like no. And so so not only did I get the like hateful messages, but I got the like you go boy messages, messages like, of solidarity. I wasn't like trying to be <laughs> like. I'm just like, how are we gonna mention this whole video and completely skip that paper towel? And be but, so like, focused on that pelican. All I'm saying right. is like. It was a cool ashtray, though. It was a very cool ashtray. <laughs> Y'all have seen other eight, like ads from the fifties, though. Like more doctors recommend right. camels. Like you, to me, I like I look back at the fifties. I'm like that time was bonkers. Right. Like I just can't imagine that at home donut maker. The, right. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> so yeah, it was this. It was just a video from the fifties. I, I probably didn't do a good enough job of explaining this. A video from the fifties showing these like you know, futuristic uh, kitchen appliances, and then it is has just a very racist paper towel holder, which they're like Southern hospitality. And right. I'm like, they probably thought they were being nice at that moment. I was oh, like, no, that's probably. Like, not uh, okay, uh, obviously. Also, they had some really dumb things, though. Like, do you really need a, a whole contraption to separate yolk from egg? Yeah. Do you, though? Can what do you, 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 you just separate just the, You crack into two shells, and you just kind of go... No, do, 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 you get your hands messy like that. Seems like a lot of I've work, never so. cracked an egg that the... haven't gotten like my hands messy with egg. Like It just happens. Like You get you get, you get get stuff on your hands when you make eggs. No, you don't yeah, have to. Not a lot of it. You don't, you don't, it well, you do, because you're, you know... <laughs> Yeah. yeah, because I don't have yolk. I don't have the contr- I don't need a contr- I'm not gonna fill this a cabinet. This guy's got a whole stick. egg cooker in his house, and he's Bro, trying to tell no, 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 no. Hey, can egg- you both stop doing this at the same time? No, <laughs> yeah. it's super weird. <laughs> it's like I'm milking a small mammal. <laughs> yeah, correct. <laughs> Cat, Cat. humanzy, dude. Humanzies aren't small. Humanzy. Don't start with a humanzy, please. Next subject. It's his first show back. Why did it have to come up already? Anyway, uh, yeah. Speaking of stupid things, like. <laughs> Uh, I saw a video that was like, hey, if you want to remove egg yolks, back when I was like trying to eat more egg whites, like, uh, just take a water bottle and like, you know, you squeeze it and then suck it suck out. Suck the yolk out. And so I started doing that and then I was like, why don't I just take a spoon and <laughs> take that's it what out? Like, like, that's what I'm saying. People are inventing <laughs> stuff like, for problems that don't exist. Right. No, I will say if, if you're cracking a bunch that is nice, anyway. It doesn't matter. That's the whole like scam of kitchen appliances. Anyway, it's like now I know why some guy decided to like put egg yolks in a carton. He's like all these stupid people out here making all these contraptions. Egg egg yolks. Well, you buy egg whites too. Can you buy yolks? Maybe I'm getting them confused. I don't think you can just buy yolks. (laughs) You can't just buy yolks. Are you thinking of just egg beaters, which is not eggs? I don't know. Okay. I'm I'm thinking egg whites. That's what it is. Like what all the healthy people eat. Yeah, egg whites. You need to walk into a dairy section and be like, where are your yolks at? (laughs) I want yolks only. (laughs) Dude, that's a good business plan right there. That's the name. Yolks only. Yolks only. (laughs) The nicest yolks around. Speaking of, uh, yeah, health conscious. (laughs) Athletic Greens, if you if you listen to any podcast, especially like male focused podcasts, you're gonna hear an ad for Athletic Greens. They just had a valuation of one point three billion dollars. Is that one of those protein shakes? Yeah, basically. Like a meal replacement. It's like an additive, really. It's not even meant for a replacement. But I'm just like I'm just blown away at what things are valued at these days. Like it's just insane to me that you can start a business and then within a few years you know, you're at a $1.3 billion valuation. It's fake, though. Well, okay, here we go. 
It is. No cap. They at least raise capital, you know, and that's like that's one of the things that's frustrating about some valuations is that you're you're doing it without any kind of raised capital. So yes, that's fake. This is like they have an this isn't like a, a software only type thing. I mean you're talking about a physical product that has like proven sales record and they have investors that are willing to put up like hundred and fifteen million dollars. So it's like it, this makes like I don't look at this and go, where does that valuation come from? I just go, I can't believe valuations are what they are right now. It's insane. Yeah, I mean, I was, I was reading briefly because you know I had to get to the show on time. It's like Tesla's like I think has record breaking profits, and then they're not going to release a new car in 2022 because of the chip shortage. And it's just like one of those crazy things where it's also like Apple has also made like so it's like you have these companies where it's like their profits and valuations are like through the roof and yet their like products that they're actually producing is like less than previous years so it's one of those things where it's like wait you're making less and it's like the same thing that you've been doing for a couple years now or longer and yet your valuations through the roof and a lot of that I think is just because people get on that hype train and that's where stuff can just be kind of inflated you know like Kudos to them for marketing on, as what did you say, men's based podcasts? Right. You know, like, I, like, hey, look, they're marketing towards, uh, you know, that audience, and it's obviously working. People are buying it. We're talking about it on our show. Is that the one with the humans in it? Soylent Green. Yes. That's what I thought. There is a Soylent. Um, that's what I see. Okay, there. that's why I'm getting so confused because it's like there is the Soylent Green from the no. What is it? Yeah, you know, the athletic, fictional movie or whatever. Athletic Greens is more, um, it's not just like a, a protein. It's meant to like give you, it is, it's m- meant to be more like the, the Soylent Green. It's meant to give you more of the nutrients that you need and not just, um, you know, a protein boost. Because there's a lot of protein powders out there that are basically just crappy protein and, and then a bunch of filler. Where oh, I can is, imagine. Yeah, it says it supports gut health. Yeah, probiotic. So it's got probiotic stuff. stuff. So, nutritionist question. If you just eat a balanced, healthy diet, do you need something like that? Can no. You, yes and no. Like, if you follow the, the food pyramid or whatever, I don't even don't know. Don't follow believe, the food pyramid. I don't know if we believe in that yeah. anymore. So, like, I said it, and I was like, wait, maybe yeah. we've. Maybe yeah, you it's need something seven different to eight now. servings of carbs <laughs> and grains. Yeah. Well, do we not? No. 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 Uh, and I think it's four to five servings on the food pyramid. But definitely don't follow the food pyramid if you are. That actually explains a lot about your diet. <laughs> I don't follow anything. Yeah, we know. <laughs> uh, no, the uh, pinnacle of health. A well balanced diet is super important, but it is hard to still hit all those nutrients. Like uh, That's where Centrum where, comes in. Where vitamins or yeah, right. yeah. <laughs> Centrum, Centrum daily. Junior. Yeah, yeah. The gummies. Uh, the chewables. Yeah, the chewables. The chewables. Yeah. <laughs> But it's meant to be an additive to, I mean, it, like everything, the, the better you can do, um, you know, diet-wise, the better you're going to be. But this is like, hey, also, you can add in some of these things that you might be missing. That's why, um, I think that's why some people do, uh, I can't remember the term for it. They, they, they're like literally like consuming other people's poop, like because of their different gut health that doesn't sound good. If you no. don't have any more information than that, I, we can just move I, I'm, on. I'm, I'm, I'm trying that, to think of the actual term for it. It's like a, a, isn't that it's how a, you get <clears throat> sepsis? No, no, no. It's done in like a healthy medical way. But yeah, there's like people it. who have. I don't think they consume it. No, they're like. They actually, <laughs> yeah, they do. Uh, like, yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I, I didn't mean it like they're like, like, oh, you're just eating a turd that sandwich. Sounds like <laughs> how you meant to <laughs> right. It's called clickbait, Justin. It is the gut bio. But it's just like they take basically like fecal matter from an individual that has exceptionally good, you know, gut Tina health. just commented, caca. <laughs> <laughs> Thank Which you, Dave, for saving me. <laughs> so we can move on from that because I don't want to hear about any more turds going up in other people's turd holes. Ugh. Hey, man, it's the future. <laughs> Speaking of which, hey. pump and dump. I'm just going to jump right into that. Uh, oh. What? That's an investment term, folks. Oh, so we're not talking uh, about poop anymore. No, but we, you know, it's dump and. I thought that's what you do. You just pump them gas station chili dogs down, and then you just dump it all out. <laughs> I don't eat my chili dogs like this. We've, yeah, you do. We've seen it. We've seen it. <laughs> we've seen it. Yeah, you got people corroborating that one. Uh, it was some ladies in a van that saw it. You guys didn't see it. Um, <laughs> Mike Miller says maybe Matt's changed one too many babies. Uh, no, so we, just because we have become your pseudo crypto podcast that knows little to nothing about it. And NFTs. Um, yeah, and NFTs. Uh, last year, $14 billion scammed in crypto and blockchain. Um, People items. is dumb. 
Well, so here's one of the things that that will happen is so many people are trying to jump on the NFT bandwagon that they're just going anywhere. And right. like anything, if, when you look for a deal and you go off the market, you're going to have issues. So there's some places that have put like a 99% adder fee hidden in the smart contract for buying tokens. And so you buy something and then boom, you've doubled up what you just spent on it. Oof. And or there's Awful. people <clears throat> right that <clears> – so. My first bit of advice is just stay on a <clears throat> on a clean market. Sorry. Stay on a clean market so that, you know, if you want to get into it, you're probably going to lose money anyway, but like don't yeah. don't don't fall into a scam by trying to, yeah. you know, bargain shop your NFTs that aren't real anyway. <laughs> well, that that goes back to what I was just saying though like with people jumping on Tesla stock. Everyone's like, "Oh, Tesla stock's doing really good a lot." And like you get a lot of people that want to be a part of that action mm -hmm. like they have with like a lot of other like hot market stocks, you know. And it's just I saw it was like the same thing like with people on NFTs. They want to be a part of that action as it's happening. And so they just kind of start throwing money at it. And it's like they don't know anything about stocks. They might not know anything, but they're like, oh, Tesla's out. Okay, we'll throw a bunch of money at Tesla. And so you get a bunch of people doing that. And it just goes, even yeah, that's though it's just that's, like. That's, that's way different. You, it's you're totally the same. <clears throat> yeah. It's totally the same. From the person who's throwing the money at it, it's the same. No. Uh, the, same person. It, it, can, it can happen that way. I mean, that's, that's what, uh, what do they call those? The uh, bets, the Wall Street bets, meme stocks. That can happen with meme stocks pumping up, but you're using a, a very poor example of a company that does... It's a pretty good example. No. It, they, they have wavering... <clears throat> it's not, though. Like, they've steadily grown, right? And, I'm not and saying Tesla there. is, like, junk or fake. I'm saying a lot of the people that are buying NFTs because they feel like they're missing out on the action are also probably buying parts of Tesla just because they don't want to miss out on the action. I'm not saying that Tesla's not a good company. I'm not saying that they're not profitable. I'm just saying that we're describing a person, the person who's being scammed with bargain shopping NFTs, okay. might also be buying meme stocks and or, you know, like Apple and Tesla stocks just because they know how hot they are on the market. You know what I'm saying? Like, right, because but, they're just but, trying but to be the, part of that action. But the safety in those two are two totally different things. I'm saying you, you, that's a that's such a clean market that you're in when you're buying Tesla stock, and it's it's had great growth. Like, don't get me wrong, it's probably had more rapid growth than it should, based off of its output. But but that's totally different than buying a NFT on a market that's not so good that gives you a 99% adder fee, or a meme stock that literally has little to nothing. As far as value goes, it's literally just a pump and dump. You see the meme stocks, what they do is they rise by 200% or yeah. more, and then they drop because people bump money in and they, they pull it out. And it just dumps. like them chili dogs. <clears throat> right. Which is where yeah. I was going to head with some crypto, too. It's not just NFTs that you're going to get scammed on by having these weird adder fees, but there's crypto that's like obvious pump and dump. And, and this is more along like what you're talking about, like with... Dogecoin would be the closest, but Doge has actually retained, you know, um, some value where it was like less than a penny and it still stayed above 14 cents, even though it dropped pretty hard. But you have something like Squid, which came about after the Squid Games. They created a token for Squid Games. They pumped it all out. The people who created it said, oh, we got hacked. Sorry. And they cut off all sales. Huh. So it literally got up to $2,800 a, a token. And these guys got away with like $3.3 .3 million uh, because they literally just shut it off. It's like that meme. It's like NFTs are the beanie babies of this generation. Yes. <laughs> that that well, one legit and, uh, made me laugh because I'm like, because you got people who are seriously making money off it like they did off the Beanie Babies. And you got a lot of people that are like buying them and like, I'm gonna hold on to this and be rich. And it's just like, you just wasted your money. <laughs> right. I guarantee you there's like a lot of like people <laughs> our age right now that has a box full of Beanie Babies that was like their retirement plan. Or another example would be cards. Cards are even a better example. Like baseball, like baseball cards? cards. <clears throat> because and they... And Pokemon. No, baseball cards are... are Pokemon cards are still still hold value as do baseball cards, but but baseball cards were actually had uh, an inflated value based yeah. off of the card makers. Yeah, Pokemon didn't do that, right? There, there's genuinely you, you may or may not remember depending on how old you are, but like in Ocala, there was probably like seven baseball card stores. Mm -hmm. 
Because, back in the nineties. Back in the nineties, because late eighties, early nineties. Because what happened is, you know, these guys that loved baseball as a kid, all of a sudden, hey, I want a Mickey Mantle card. They they start blowing up, and people go, oh, this is something that we should care about. Yeah. Well, then I can't remember. I don't want to. I don't want to go too far out of the realm of fact, but it, I don't know if it was. Tops. Please don't. Right. That would be degrading to our listeners. <laughs> I don't know if it was Tops or another baseball card manufacturer. That would put out the magazines that would be like, oh, there's only 500 of these. Yeah. Those were the Beckett's, yeah. right? Was it Beckett's? Yeah, Beckett yeah, was the, the price the, guide. Yeah, the yeah. price guide. But they would go, oh, there's only 500 of these, um, you know, whatever baseball player, yeah. Cal Ripken Juniors. When in reality, so they're worth, you know, $2,000. Right. When in reality, there was 50,000 of these right. cards out there. So they're artificially inflating the value of these cards. And to me, that's more aligned with what you know nfts would be where it's like oh or or some of this blockchain stuff where it's like yeah there's some people that are going to make some good money off of it but mostly speaking people are going to be left holding the bag right and i don't think that's overall i don't think that should, means that you shouldn't get involved i do think that there's a level of like hey if you have some extra money and you're looking to diversify like go on the clean market buy something that you're not going to get scammed on and go from there but don't get it caught up in one of these bargain bin things where it's overinflated value and you're going to end up, you know, owing tons and tons of money. In December, a Michael Jordan rookie card sold for seven hundred and thirty-eight thousand dollars. Jeez. December of twenty twenty-one. Mm -hmm. Nice. That's ridiculous. So there's still obviously a market for cards. Yeah. Yeah, you yeah. know, probably not like it once was, but again, that's probably still before people were. That's in the early eighties. Yeah. Mid -80s, right, right. So yeah, you before know, before they got. So Super popular, right? Well, to find the value though, like we talk about Beckett, so like you used to have to go to the store and buy like the most recent like Beckett, magazine right. and and look up the value on that. Like now, it's just one of those things where I think you could value it a lot easier, and I think you know people might realize, oh hey, there's might be more of these than well, originally well, thought because well, you could look on eBay and you could look in places like that. Because I remember Paddock Mall had a baseball card like convention type thing there with right. sellers and buyers and, and people valuing them and because like I had a 1933 like card that my dad's cousin gave me because he had he's one of those people that had like a box of baseball cards right. so I have like all of those valuable ones and you know he gave me a couple of them and then they're like oh yeah you know and, and like I got a value there but it was just like one of those things where it's like hey, you don't see that anymore like unless you go into a big city, I think. Well, but like because, for Ocala to have it in the mall, it was like because you don't see it anymore because that market. Well, has yeah, you can just off. go online now. Well, no, that's not entirely true. And no, because no one cares about baseball cards anymore. Right, the markets dropped off for it because they overinflated the market. Yeah, you know, they artificially inflated the market, <clears throat> and so it just it dropped that market out. And you're you're gonna see that with anything that gets big, you know, it's it's artificially inflated. One of the things that's happening now that you know. Everyone always wonders, what should I keep? As kids, we're like, well, let's keep Beanie Babies. Beanie Babies, obviously. But in reality, if you were to keep something, it should have been shoes. Mm -hmm. Shoes now are those things that we go, oh, man, this is a 97 release. Yep. You know, and they're super clean, and they're going on StockX for $3,000. Yep. And it's like, oh, well, I wish I would have known then. Do you know how dumb I was in 97? Right. I wore them Ken Griffey's until, like, the soles were falling <laughs> yeah, off, yeah. too. Like, but, no one would buy them in the condition of which I, you know. Which is why they're so valued. And right. think about baseball cards when our dads were kids. It's yeah. like, oh, yeah, we would just, you know. We Put them in the spokes of the bike. Right. <laughs> so because they're, Idiots. yeah, you get old enough and you start to have money. You go, man, I want this pair that I, I never could have. Or mm -hmm. I want this car that I never could have. Right, but now I'm a millionaire, so I'm gonna spend four thousand dollars on a pair of shoes that were eighty nine dollars when they came out. Right, but again, that's it's what what's big that you just didn't think about at the time, right? And cards were that were it for them. Shoes are a good yeah. example for us. Like, I can't believe, and and so where they used to have meetups that were cards. Yeah, it's 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 not because you can see the value of cards now because now they have meetups for shoes mm -hmm. there's sneaker conventions all over the country where people get together as sneakerheads and they check out prices on sneakers because and some of it's new stuff just like so, it was cards so like right. if you just look at the trend though i mean i feel you know it's going to be like beanie babies and baseball cards though at one point the yes, sneakers yeah, are going to just fall sure. off though and yeah. so what's the next thing like fortnite skins well, that's kind of what we're getting <laughs> like, at. Yeah, I was like, as you were talking, I was trying to think of like, what are the modern kids' version of baseball that's, cards? That's and like, the only thing I can think of NFTs. is like video game right. skins. But like, no, I mean like kids though. Like, yeah, I don't true. think like elementary kids are buying NFTs. I mean, if they are, then <laughs> they, wow. And it's not necessarily even elementary. Either. You're talking middle. Like, my kids definitely know what NFTs are. 
you know, and they Can know they come like, on and explain it. Yeah, right. No, I'm okay. still waiting for someone to like fully explain like an NFT. Same. Yeah. Like, okay. Like, like you haven't found one either. Yeah, no. no, I found some people that like talk about them and they're like, "Here's the future," and you're like, just in layman's terms, and it's just like, I, I don't know. That well, they're, they're non-fungible. Like that's really about as far as we go. Part of the future. I don't know that they're the future. I I don't think that they're yeah. This is going to be one of those clips where people are going to go back to and be like, look at this idiot. I don't think they're going to last. Ready Player yeah. One is the future. Yeah. We're getting there. We're yeah. getting there. But that, the, but Ready Player One is like, you know, like I, I thought it was a great book and movie. It, it, but it's just like, that's like Matrix Light. Ready Player yeah. One. You know what I'm me? saying? Like, that's really what it is. Yeah. I, I did it backwards. I watched the movie and then I read the book. And there are two totally different things and I like them for two totally different reasons. I agree with that 100% because like I read the book before the movie came yeah. out. I was late to that game and I loved the book and I loved the movie but yeah, they're pretty different but then yeah. again, it's like when you're reading the book, you're like, I don't know how they'd make this into a movie. Well, this well, is like the case with most books, you know. Yeah. I, I just think that they did a great job with the movie making it appealing to a large audience as opposed to Mike Miller said our couch guest looks bored to tears. Well, yeah. Uh, he is. That was his whole plan. He's waiting. That was to get his whole plan all along. Actually, it wasn't. We need a we need a board cam. Like just every time he yawns, put it on air. <laughs> uh, speaking of which, I don't know which way I want to go with this. I'm going to switch it up. So, Zoom were you fatigue. expecting something else, Ross, to happen after sitting on that couch for so long? <laughs> I'd rather get fucked than sit here listening. Oh, wow. <laughs> there it goes. Turn the audio down on that one. Uh, it's a family podcast, sir. So, uh, Zoom fatigue. Oh, well, I wrote it in chat. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. It's in print forever. Zoom fatigue is a real thing. They, uh, It's like scientifically backed now. Like, yeah, people are done. Like, I think it's just work fatigue. Well, I don't think that. No, it's, Zoom is such a pain, man. It, it really is. It's not. It's never an enjoyable experience for me to sit on my couch and look into my webcam for more than ten minutes at a time. So that's the literally the biggest complaint that, like, by far, is that eye contact is so weird because you <laughs> yeah. can't actually look at the person you're talking to. You can either look at the webcam or you can look at them, but you, you can't connect. Yep eye to eye and it's very very frustrating and so the second is physical cues you know but um and then third would be delay you might think you know delay is the first but it's like no it's it's that awkwardness of not being able to look someone in the eyes while you're having a full-on conversation with them yeah it's weird i don't like it well what was weird is i was in a it was like a trade show meeting and they have like breaks in between the different meetings it was very they're very quick you know fast-paced meetings and it's like Everybody, everybody, myself included, would like you'd like mute and turn your video off in those little break periods. But there was one guy who, you know, like I know exactly bald head, about. leather vest, bolo tie, yeah. like <laughs> plateau, you know, desert butts, buttes, whatever, like in the background backdrop. You know, he's giving this real Western vibe. He sat there for five minute break and just <laughs> yeah. stared oh, at wow. the screen. <laughs> didn't move his head, didn't move, break eye contact, <laughs> didn't say a thing, like didn't scratch his face. I was like, you know, you, you see, uh, who's a Facebook guy, Zuckerberg, and like, he was like a lizard person. Like that was like, I was getting that vibe because he's just sitting there. So when I like, then it's my turn to come to the meeting. I'm thoroughly freaked out at this point. Like, what is he gonna like? Like all of a sudden, like reanimate, like and and actually have a meeting now? But yeah, it was it's creepy though, yeah, very I, creepy. I had the same meetings and I dealt with the same person, and I was like, most people, it some people were stupid off. and didn't turn the camera or yeah. the audio off, but they would talk to each other if there was multiple people. This was just one guy, and he literally yes. just sat there. He should have yodeled or something. What he he looked like someone who would yodel. Now that you say that, like you know, I wouldn't he be surprised did. if he's like, I'm a. Yeah. I'm Sumter County yodeling champion. But like his his like big <laughs> his big moment in the presentation is when he would like because you don't know that there's like buttes behind him. He would like back out and show like his whole like you know full color banner backdrop, and he's like, "See this beautiful color? We printed this." <laughs> this is like, I like oh. it. is that how they're called? They're called buttes, not butts. I'm pretty sure it's buttes. You can call it whatever you want to call it, man. Yeah. Well, why Desert stop butts. now? Yeah, you usually why, do anyways. Why change now? Tito brought up a good point. You don't have to wear pants. Yeah. To a Zoom meeting. Yeah, I mean, don't, I'm not I'm not saying that work from home is an ideal to some people, for sure. I'm just saying, for me personally, and if you're not actually, if you're just work from home and you don't have to do a lot of Zoom meetings, fine. Right. But if, 
you know, in my situation, I'm on a Zoom meeting at least once or twice a day, right. and I'm 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 just over it. And so I'll have vendors that'll be like, "You want to hop on a Zoom?" And I'm like, "Actually, I don't." No. Like, just tell me your camera's broken. Right? No, no I'll do a, <laughs> I'll do a, a phone call or something right. like that. You know, but I'll, I don't need to Zoom just for the sake of Zooming. Because like we've all paid for enterprise and that. I like that. to say you see your face and let's all have a let's have a <laughs> goodbye team. Christy said maybe that's like why that he didn't thing. You ever have one of those like where they're yeah. like trying to get like the synergy of an in person meeting? Ashley, uh, Christy said maybe that's why he didn't move. He didn't have pants on. Yeah. So I'm gonna go back to shoes and I'm gonna. I was on Adidas's website. This is like a year or two ago now when I first started noticing this. Now it's on everything that I see. Um, but I was looking at a pair of shoes that were like 180 bucks. Not gonna buy it for that. I was just waiting for him to go on clearance. And it was like, hey, you could pay 180 bucks, or just split this 180 bucks over five payments. Yeah. Oh, you see that with on everything firm. now. Yeah. Right. You see it with everything now. So I started doing a little bit digging into this because I'm like, I, I, this just blows my mind that people would do that. Like, certainly this can't be a thing. Sorry. Certainly. <laughs> <laughs> You got some on me. This can't Suffering. be a thing <laughs> that I slur my asses sometimes uh, that people are doing, right? And so I a little bit of digging into this of people that were um, – of uh, millennials and Gen Z that were surveyed, mm. one of the bigger fears above death and going to war – granted, this is like before like the Russia stuff right now, so that might change – but – Their biggest fear was credit card debt. Hmm. And so these companies like Affirm and Klarna and whatever, some of the other Ah, ones Klarna, that's what I was trying to think of. Yeah. They've jumped on this fear and they go, no, no, don't worry. It's not not credit card debt. It's Klarna debt. Right. No, you're not going to have the the (laughs) 24.89% you know, APR. We're just going to break up these payments for you. No big deal. Well, what's happening is, is... People are still overextending themselves. Right. Yeah, well, yeah, because it's easier now. Right. <laughs> so, so I have a credit card that'll do that for you, though. <clears throat> that'll like you make a big purchase. They're like, yo, you want to split this up into different payments, and therefore it's like this whole chunk's not on this statement. I'll split this between your next three statements. That's the whole purpose of credit cards, though. Right. <laughs> That's kind of what I was thinking too. It's different than that. I'm not explaining it right to you guys. You guys are a little bit so dumb. So it does it without the APR? <laughs> yes. Okay. okay. Do you pay a different share charge, though. because he doesn't know APR. <laughs> yeah, you, yeah, it's not my fault you guys aren't screwed So, that. So here's the, here's the thing is uh, Afterpay, uh, and this is their actual stats that they can show, says that they increased purchases by 17%, Klarna by 41%, and Affirm – by 81%. 81% of people are buying stuff that they wouldn't normally buy. Now, but are they actually paying for it? Oh, they're paying for it. <laughs> so what, don't, don't be weird. Yes. Yes and no. <laughs> the, the, the money that they make, so they charge a higher percentage than a credit card does for a website. So if I buy shoes for $180 through a firm, mm-hmm. instead of paying you know, a credit card, a card company you know, the, anywhere from 2.7 to 3.5%, they're gonna pay a firm like 10 to 18%. Uh, and so, okay. sometimes more, sometimes less. I don't, I don't know all the details. Mm-hmm. But so then a firm takes that and goes, well, I'm making, you know, let's just say at a minimum 10% on each of these purchases. Right. They're able to recoup that in all of the okay, fees. Yeah. You, you know all what I'm right. saying? It's, it's a... It's a a chance they're willing to take. It's kind of like uh, check cashing places. Like, yeah, some people don't come back and pay that advance, but they're making so much on interest that it doesn't matter. Yeah, the, it, yeah. It's, I just feel bad for the people who are using that though, because I would. I bought something that was like eleven bucks on Amazon, and it's like split this up between three pl- payments with Klarna, and I'm like, who's split, splitting up an eleven dollar? purchase you know like right. and then i'm like oh i'm sure there's a ton of people out there who are doing that and the same reason the same people who do the three to or what 12 percent you know uh for check cashing at a gas station you right. know just because like they need it like instantly or something like that it, it just it's it sucks it yeah, sucks it's it's predatory. predatory but also like you don't need 180 dollars shoes like that one is the that one's <laughs> i don't know jesse's like i beg the difference. <laughs> Uh, I, you know, I, I'm 
I'm not going to go down the the path of like, why do they have a phone? You know, like, you know, if I'm you, not doing all that. If you but don't it, have $180 to spend on those shoes, that, then you don't need $180. Bingo, that's what I was going to say. It's just like, look, if you're if you're at the position in your life and like shoes are your thing, like I think of you, Jesse, it's just like, you know, I'm not going to do it, but like I see you do it, and that's normal for me because it's like, you know, you got a roof over your head, your stuff's paid, and like, and you you like shoes, that's fine. But then there's people who feel like they need those shoes. They've got to keep up, and right. they also need to pay rent. And so now, like, that's a conflicting thing yeah. of, like, paying for the shoes, but also paying for actual bills and necessities. And and that's where it sucks, is, you know, that these places are predatory because, you know, it's like you pair that with some good advertising and some other social cues. And, you know, and people feel like they need to keep up right. and, you know, buy it's, that kind of stuff. When people feel like they can now that they can and split they, it up yeah, in three exactly. Right. That's like, it. It's, oh, this is perfect. It's not like, let me just work for it now. Like, save <laughs> right. up and work for it. It's just like, I can get it immediately. Yeah. And I haven't done it. I would I would imagine it does it without credit checks. I would But I, I, so. I haven't gone that far, and I did digging into some of that. Uh, 75% of the users are Gen Z and millennials. So it's like the same people that are like, yeah, I'd rather die than have debt. Yeah. Are just you know encumbering themselves with debt by overextending on the things that they don't probably actually debtors' do. prisons are going to be a thing in the future, man. That's like what the metaverse is going to be. Well, that's that's <laughs> debtors' player prisons. One, if you've read it, yeah, you know that's you you have prisons that are people that owe debt to like basically the company store. Yeah, you know? people were giving uh, Elon Musk to go back to him again like a lot of flack for him being like, oh well, people going to Mars, they'll just work it off when they go to Mars. And they're like, you're creating a debtors' <laughs> prison on another planet you know obviously like the people getting outraged are like reading a little more into it this way than that right. way you know i'm not getting into that but it was just funny that he's just like yeah you you're, you're interplanetary space travel you just work it off like okay that doesn't sound like fun yeah yeah that i think we'll crack that egg when we get there <laughs> well i don't know that we're, we're we're quite at that point yet but it's like that, that means mars is going to be the new australia well, that's just a prison prison. Yeah. But still, <laughs> yeah. like, I mean, prison's prison. You know, debtor's yeah. prison. Or was. Or, like, British for all colony prison. Out there, it's not <laughs> currently a prison colony. Good idea. I mean, they're trapped by like... all the poisonous plants and deadly animals and a giant ocean. Well, isn't that every continent then? At what point does it become an island turn into a continent? At the point where the people decided that one's a continent. Okay, I'm just wondering. Yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> because it's like, is Australia not just a really big island? Well, it wouldn't be. Why wouldn't... did you say it like that? Yeah. Why wouldn't I say it like that, Justin? This I have a microphone. Did you just fart? No. On air? I would, but I didn't. Huh. You know disgusting. I would. Disgusting. Absolutely it's disgusting. Anyway, anyway, are you done uh, railing Don't on Australia? look at me and give me the are you done. Are you done railing on Australia? Because everyone's going to assume that this is me. Yeah, because you hate Australia. I don't know. I definitely don't no, hate no, Australia. No, 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 no. Don't try and do like a PR campaign right now. Australians have an issue right with now. me. One Australian had an issue with me. Oh, no, 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 he no. had one in China, oh. too. Okay. He, he goes to Shanghai and he fights story. in Australia. <laughs> that's a private story. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> he made light of 9-11. <laughs> Okay? Ooh. You don't do that. Never forget. Right. Mm -hmm. And I didn't. And I hope he doesn't either anymore. <laughs> <laughs> and he's not the only one either. They have an issue He goes with back me. to Australia and he goes, hey, guys, you know what they say about those Americans. It's all true. <laughs> it's all 100% yeah, right. true. What? Just fine. I go to China of all right. places and what happens? I run into this <laughs> beautiful but arrogant <laughs> American. No, I was minding my own business. <laughs> Uh, that reminds me of uh, one of the rush hours when they're in like Paris and the guy's like oh you Americans are nothing but over aggressive and Chris Tucker like pulls out his gun he's like what did you just say to me he's like don't say that take it back yeah you guys want to name all the good Chris Tucker movies now this, yeah please Friday. don't not. <laughs> is that the only one money talks rush hour money talks is dead no we're not gonna do this <laughs> y'all <laughs> fell right in my trap Right into my trap. Anyway, do you have it? what? None. Okay. Have you guys seen Detroit Urban Survival Training? Yes. Have you seen all the people disproving? Actually, Ross and I, I mean, we share these videos all the time. Oh, the Detroit Urban Survival Training? And the people, like, mocking them, yeah. Well, people are like, this guy's going to get people killed in Detroit because he's like, <laughs> he is, like, this kind of, like, overweight dude who has, like, a dojo or whatever you call it, and he's, like, training people, but, like, none of it seems to be actual I, like i feel like he's watched one too many steven seagal movies see i i beg to differ i get the joke like it's still funny to me but also it to me you could make this argument about any martial arts ever 
right? Is you you've oh, now going to go down that path? Well, yeah, because you you get someone, you know, to the point of where they feel comfortable in a situation where they shouldn't feel comfortable. Like, so you can make the argument that, like, hey, he's providing you a tool that it, just in case you end up in that situation, because it's not like he's like fight everyone that has a gun. He's like, look, your best bet is to just get away, always get away, get away, get away, get away. But in the event that someone has like a gun against you, you could do these things. Now they are hilarious. Right? They're yeah, no, I was just like they're very ballsy maneuvers. I, I'm just, it's just the most of the people like there's a guy that went to the class and took video of like look at me like. Uh, proving this guy wrong, but it's like no, but you move them. You knew the move ahead of time. The trick is to not. So know the how move come ahead of time. the element of surprise? How do you know the criminals aren't watching his movies and knowing the moves ahead of time? And, and maybe they do, but like, wouldn't you want to be as equipped as you can be? Maybe the one. But maybe, they know the moves. Maybe the moves he's putting on video aren't the moves. Bingo. Ooh. But this guy, the one, it was like uh, you got me there. It was this Jesse guy James. that he watched the move happen, and he was like, "Look, you just do this." And so after he watched the move happen, his buddy like turns the camera on, and then he he has a defense for the move that just happens. And I'm like, yeah, but but he got you the first time though. Like he, <laughs> right. he got he he won that. But I think that with most martial arts, Krav Maga being one of them, because Krav Maga is specifically positioned toward women. Like it's it's like promoted towards them to like, hey, here's a self defense class. And then and I hate to bring this up because we know someone. Yeah. <laughs> That was in the Krav Maga, but this is like one of the frustrating things for me is like, no, you're teaching them like to feel confident in a situation where they they should just learn to get away, right? Or they're overconfident and thinking like, oh, I can fight someone because I've learned a few moves based on if they grab my right wrist with their left hand. And so the argument could be made, should they feel, you know, empowered? Yes. Should you feel overconfident? What is it? The Dunning-Kruger effect? I don't know. Where it's like, Isn't that that fake company from The Office? Yes, Dunder Mifflin. It's the Dunder Mifflin effect. Where Close enough. The more you, the more you learn about a subject, the less you feel um, confident in it. It's like you know, the, the your first lesson or your first two lessons in in any kind of martial arts, like your confidence is through the roof. You think you know it, yeah. and then you know, really, your actual skill is way down. You know, way down. And then the more you learn, you're like, oh, I was not prepped for that at all. So they do. This guy does private training at your facility or at your home or office. Bring him in. We talking about Dustin? <laughs> yep. Does he travel? I don't know. Collective. He's also got a great attitude. But I get it. I get both sides of it. I think like, yeah, you shouldn't. You don't want to feel like you're so comfortable with someone with a gun that you end up getting shot. I mean, don't they say, though, if someone's got a gun like, and they're robbing you, just give them what you have? But they also say if they got a gun and they're getting you in the car, definitely don't go in the car. Yeah. They're like, you're, you're dead at that <laughs> <Yeah>. point. <laughs> you're, you got... you're dead. So, like, at that point, you know, it's like one of those, like, you should probably, you know, fight back at that point because right. you're going you're gonna, to you're gonna be in a bad situation either like way. I got two payments left on these sneakers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you ain't taking them. No, I <laughs> no you, yeah, 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 you walk you. away with my stuff. But, yeah, I'm definitely not going anywhere, or you're not going to, you know, threaten my family or anything. All right. Detroit version of the Redneck Ninja. Yes, absolutely. You talking about Judy Chops? Judy Chops. Guys, we're going to bring on our person on the couch today, Ross Anthony. Come on up. I thought his last name was Atron. Ross Atron. I want to make a joke so bad, but I'm not going to. Just do it. No. No, do it. They don't have this man talking, though. You hear this two assholes? <laughs> wow. There you go again, Ross. He's our right, well, Send him back onto the mic. Yeah. That's a very bright phone you have there. Oh, uh, thank you. <clears throat> have some. I don't care. I have a cold sore. <laughs> Just so you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. Good it's a good thing we got you off the mic. <laughs> Herpesation. That's what I'm on right now. No, it's gonna yeah. A Breva. It's 22 bucks, but it's worth it. That's my bad. Hey, now you know. I understand. I'm sorry. Oh, my God. Welcome to the mic, Ross. In case you guys didn't know, Ross and Kareem have a podcast. Uh, those guys. With a Z. With a Z. Wow. Don't, uh, don't go looking up the wrong people. And you guys were on hi hiatus for a while, and you finally made your comeback on, of all days, January 6th. <laughs> like, I was listening to that. Y'all made like a couple of references to the... Yeah. Like, I was like, is, at, before I listened to it, I was like, is this intentional? Why did they come back on January? It was like, 
very uh it was like a, a two year break too almost no it was like a one over why one don't you day. let him tell you yeah i know just keep just keep running your mouth it's all the right best thing fine. Ever. go ahead tell us about the podcast it's fun <laughs> okay <laughs> wow this is why i was running my mouth uh so i was telling matt about it i was like yeah they have like a big this is before i listened to the latest one too i was like they have like a pretty decent following in france for some reason we do. I have no idea why, but we just picked up a, a ton of people over there. We get a bunch of stuff from them. Uh, no, no, we took like a year off just yeah. from all the COVID stuff and everything right. else like that. Him try and schedule everything else like that happening. But besides that, it was fine. Besides, you guys invited me on. I want to say you guys invited you invited me on. You're like this was next week, so I was like, wow. I really tried to find out if you had any black people on here before me. And didn't find one. And I'm like, you invited me on, and and literally, you're like, hey, do you want to come on next week? Which is the beginning of uh, Black History Month. So I really want to appreciate that. That's that's awesome. Uh, we yeah, thought it would be a top call. That. Mm. If I were, see, I got to be careful because you and I can joke way differently off air than we can on. Air. No, just go ahead and say it. You can say the interview. I was gonna say, no, <laughs> I was gonna say if I was gonna invite a black person, it wouldn't be you. <laughs> like, all right. I don't think that's anyone's like. Uh, you're like, oh, Uber black guy. Like, no. Uh, yeah. It's just mean spirit. It is, really. It it's just ass. the truth. Justin, he's our so, guest on the show. Yeah. Treating him like Sometimes that. your commentary just, ins- it's, it makes me, it's like. <laughs> <laughs> Are you it's yelling like, at the phone? It's like, it's, like Grand, it's like driving your car 100 miles an hour in Grand Theft Auto and just something smacks the side of it and you just kills your running. <laughs> you're like, what the hell is this for? That's it's what like, it feels like. Matt kills me with his commentary at times. <laughs> yeah, well. He said you're you a T-bone way. wreck about <laughs> miles is. an hour. Oh, my God. Y'all need to learn to drive better, then. Uh, so I will say, you know, I made the joke about, well, all right, I referenced that we can joke differently off air because you are one of the few friends that I have that there is In no life. topic okay. off limits with you. You're willing. No. I mean, there is on the air right now, just to throw that out there. But in, in, in general... You're you're a person that's willing to like go to the dark edges of humor yep. to try to find that joke, and I I personally think it's hilarious. We've known each other long enough that I know this, but some people may not know that about you, so they'll probably hear something every now and then. They're like, "What? What oh, did he dude. just say?" I have people that like are friends of yours, and I can just say it like you know, like RJ and all them. Don't speak to me anymore. <laughs> like they walk by me all day long, and they're just like, "Yeah, I don't want to talk to this guy." <laughs> I don't it's know what fun. he's gonna say. Yeah, but but to know you is to know that you're you're gonna go for it, and sometimes mm-hmm. it works, and sometimes it may not. But like that's if you stay in the safe zone of comedy, it's never that funny. You know, you're someone that's actually willingly gone on stage as a stand up, and like that's we talked about it. I think last week. Uh, or maybe the week before, like that's that's hard to do. I can't. You, you know. got to be willing to just basically put everything you have out there and not care. That's the hard, I think that's the honest hardest. Ugh, that's the hardest part about anything like that. Yeah, you can't. If you have any fear, it gets exposed. It's kind of like what they say about playing in the NFL. If you play in high school, play in college, that's one level. Right. But playing in the NFL exposes every single thing right. about you. There, you can't hide anymore. Yeah, it's top of the top. It's being on stages. It's it's basically it's a combat sport. You are you're against the crowd. The crowd you say is a comments board. Combat sport. Oh, combat sport. Like, yeah, a comments CTE? board. Do I have <laughs> yeah. CTE? After listening to this, I wish I did. Right. I, I you know Try I forget. I, I drove a motorcycle here. I can't wait to run into traffic yeah. and get hit by a damn. He's, he's gonna not wear the helmet. He's on picking the way up your out. kind of humble brags there. Yeah, right. Uh, How's that a humble brag? Because he still thinks. <laughs> I don't know if you guys know this, but I took my orange Ninja 250 here today. <laughs> what 250? No, it's a thousand, sir. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. Do they still make the 250s? Of course they do. Yeah, Matt rides one. Everyone's too. beginner bike. Did you say Paul Reiser? No, Matt rides one. Oh, Matt rides one. Looks like fucking Big Bird running around the street. He, you so did, you have seen me on a motorcycle. Actually have. He did have that yellow 350. He did. Yeah. It was a 550. Tall, 550. And I had the 400. What for? The Suzuki. Oh, oh, the GN. Yeah. Yeah, that's different, though. Um, it, it's kind of hard to also picture you guys are married the way you guys just sit in here and ramble on about nothing. Well, that's why like, it's just, we're it, it not make, allowed to do that to our wives. That's I know. It, it's, They're supportive, it, the block, supportive of. The block of this has got to be like, like yeah. the conversation you brought this up. If I'm married to you and you brought this up to me at any point. I would really start considering keeping my kids away from me. My if wife just knows. Had one, I'd be like, I can't let you influence my child. No. My wife knows not to like bring up certain topics, and I'll give the out. I'll tell people like, hey, just it's a, like, please don't. I'm gonna just start rambling, and they're like, no, I just, I was just saying. And the next thing you know, 
30 minutes have passed. I'm sweating profusely. My face is red because I've just gone on and on. No, but I wish. it's got to be good. I, th- I think that about meth and crack, right? It's got to be good because you you see the all effects right, of it. I'll go with this. Here you go. Well, you see the effects of it. You like we all know, like growing up, like what a crackhead looked like. Now we all know what a meth head looks like. That seems good. And no, that doesn't seem good. But the fact that people still choose to do it, knowing full well, I'm like, there must be something there. Well, of course there is. It's crack. <laughs> right, but like it's hard for me to like what, I, like it's so intriguing to me that I'm like. When I'm on my deathbed, I'm going to try it. Like, because you know the effects and you still choose to do it. I'm just picturing a bunch of like 90-year-old geriatrics in a nursing home just like <laughs> freebasing crack cocaine. Okay? Right. <laughs> like, but like... And then the Alzheimer's kicks in so they don't remember what the hell they're doing or why they're so the CTE. feeling that way. You know how yeah. circuses have like the sideshow? That'd be a great little addition like old, pe- like old geriatrics freebasing <laughs> on the side. You know, if they I die, you just get new ones. <laughs> Yeah, I know. I'd, I'd yeah. pay to see some old Jerry actors freebasing. <laughs> what better way to go? Like, I don't like, I, I just, to me, it's wild because, again, and then you see fight. the effects, and then yet we still have new people doing it. I do know someone that... You ever had a family member on crack? Or, like, anybody, like, you know, that were, like, on... Oh, the, yeah, absolutely. That? I mean, we had a squatter at my old job that, like... Oh, nice. I was like, yeah, So the yeah. squatter was a family member? Why are all her teeth, like, perfectly good here and just rotted out right here? No. And he's uh, like, well, well brought it out in the middle. I got I'm, a couple I'm about of to teach you why. about uh, crack pipes. <laughs> he's like, you know those glass Hit this. Uh, roses, roses, yeah, <laughs> the, the, you know the little glass, you yeah. know things that. Yeah, you because know, I never understood this. Like, why do they sell little paper roses? Everybody, in glass everybody, bottles? bookmark this. Justin's going to teach you how to get high. Yeah, but you know what I'm saying. I don't know if they still do it, but I, it was always shocking to me that like once I found out, I'm like, oh, you're selling crack pipes. Yeah, that next makes- to the register, <laughs> the like Jiffy store. When did you find out about this? With, with Last this year, dude. Squatted in this? How old were you? Is what I'm asking. I was like probably 13 or 14. Oh, okay. If you're gonna say you're like 32, I was gonna no, be like, no, 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 no. Because <laughs> this lady, I, I genuinely was like, why are just right here her teeth bad? Did I go, did. Why didn't you go ask her? I asked my dad. No, why didn't you go ask her? Because she was, I couldn't get in there. She was squatting in the the, prop, the property. <laughs> okay. that we Is that advisable there. to go talk to a crackhead about yeah. their teeth? I'm black. We always talk to crackheads. And listen, <laughs> you, I, I will. I, I've learned. Crackheads as I've are some had. of the best people ever, man. They get you some of the <laughs> best things you can. Uh, you can <laughs> yeah, buy. right. Exactly. I got this rake for two dollars. As long like, as you don't yeah, mind that it's fine. stolen, it's That's good. All right. I yeah. bought a TV off a crackhead before. It's fine. Yeah. I've had. Listen, yeah. my favorite, one of my favorite things ever. I had a crackhead try to pit, try to pit like it was just printed art like it was like printed art of like the Mona Lisa and stuff it was like trying to hand it to me it was like this is like the Mona Lisa yeah this is how real. much is this I'll give this to you for $350 i am yeah. like $350 he's like no uh, uh, $350 literally I'm like alright like, <laughs> I'll take the Mona Lisa for that I bought it too. I just be like, yeah, <laughs> oh, yeah. sign this. Let me put it in the frame. That's a, a that's a that's a conversation piece you put in your dining room because people are like, why the hell do you have a signed crappy printout of the Mona Lisa? Well, yeah. Bought that one from a crackhead. Anyway, it's just mind blowing to me that that people still hop on all these drugs knowing full well. But I do know someone. I, I've known people that have struggled with those, and, and like major struggle. But I also know someone that was like, yeah, I tried meth twice. <laughs> like what? only twice. And and he's like, he or she is like a uh, <laughs> uh, like a you know very professional person that like is pretty successful dude that's what Adderall, oh, Adderall is basically is, is low concentrated yeah meth. this is like but he also tried to be yeah, it's just, it's just amphetamine it is yeah. just, I don't know what the meth adds to it but it's not amphibians? the meth part it's oh. it's like literally it's amphetamine. amphetamine part yeah but uh, but he was like yeah it's terrible I was high for two days and you know I scratched my skin all the heck and that's not bad you know there's times in life I mm, want to be up for like a day you, come on listen you ever you ever had time off from work or anything else like this and you're just like I don't want to go to sleep no. I just want to stay up. I kind of feel that. I, like you want to, you want to maximize your you time maximize where you're not your working, time. doing you're like, stuff that you actually want meth, to do. I can see where meth yeah, comes into you, a real consideration. You can maximize your time without being on meth. Yeah, just so you no, know. but he also he no, no. He's making no. he's making a good point. No, I, I understand you where he's coming that. from. Uh, yeah. I don't. I, I guess I, I've dealt with insomnia and like so the little bits of sleep I can get. I do want that. And I feel like I've got enough energy that I don't need to do math. You're basically to maximize a weekend. Like. But, but mathematically, you're taking like your one day off. Which say you're awake for you know this but many hours. You're doubling it. But it's fashionable to do lines of coke. Come on. 
Well, I don't like think like it's if some, like, 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 like if somebody if somebody walked out here right now and just started hitting up lines of coke and was like, yeah, we hit so, this. You'd probably look at them like, oh, they do coke. Every but now but now. it's not. But if somebody it, just started hitting meth, you would honestly like, oh my god, they have such an issue and problem. It's like no, it's same no, it's, thing. it's it's actually fashionable to do Adderall right now. What's the other one? DMT. No. Totally different drug. Please but yeah, it is been fashionable with Adderall. Please don't get Joe Rogan Jr. over here started with this. Yeah, I know, right? It is been fashionable with I'm mad with at how Adderall. he does look like him now, too. He's starting to grow his little beard like him and everything. Talk about I told you, know, you I have a beard. Arts. I have a cold sore. And I'm trying to keep it hidden. All right, nice. You just sucked up all over. All right, I'll hit it again. <laughs> hey, listen. That's, uh, oh boy. that's Ollie's discount uh, energy drink. Just no, it's so terrible. You know. Yeah. Yep. It's 300 Wait, milligrams. Ollie's has their own brand of... No, drink. but they bought out. Uh, what's the one? This is like the Bang Rockstar equivalent. Rockstar made a Bang equivalent. Rain. No, Rainstar. this really it's is. Rockstar. This really is the Joe Rogan podcast. Like light. <laughs> no, I'm cheap. In case you guys don't know, Racetrack personally messaged me to let me. <laughs> Why know. the hell would they message you? He's a salt in the soda. I'm the salt in the soda, and they pers- personally messaged me. How do you me not know that? To oh let me know that God. they're no longer selling their Left Hook energy drinks. I'm the Sultan of Soda. I get a free. How have medium? y'all never heard him talk about that? He no. never shut like once what? a week. We hear about him talk about salt and I've soda. Never heard I get a free medium drink this. every single Jeez. day from Racetrack if I want. He lets everyone know. I'm surprised y'all been left out of the loop on that one. It could be a small no, coffee he's... too, but I get a medium soft drink every single day. That's theft. That's why you look. The I don't way know. You for, look. Like he's not years paying now. for it. That's theft. No, I'm not. You're I stealing. My coat you're, no, you're stealing from the yeah. damn hey, store. It's white trash royalty. Justin, on, Justin McDonald's a damn thief. That does remind me. I'm not going to out this person, but when the Wawa's... Because she's letting you walk away with it. You heard that. When the, when the you know, Wawa's was open, because of someone you. that we all know was like, hey, y'all, for the opening of Wawa's, they're giving away free sandwiches. <laughs> <laughs> you just take them off the counter and you walk out. <laughs> and they're like, what do you mean? They're like, yeah, I got my sandwich. I didn't have to pay for it. They're like, yeah, dude, you, you're supposed to go to the counter and pay for it. Because they were giving out free coffees, too. Justin just comes out to the car with his kids and a t-shirt full of candy and everything. Yeah. <laughs> shh, shh, shh. Quiet, quiet. Hurry up, let's go. Hit the yeah. gas. Why you don't yeah. steal gobstoppers? If anyone asks, I'm the salt of soda. <laughs> <laughs> Here's my card. <laughs> <laughs> yes. My secret's out. Ah, my secret's out. This is a damn thief. Oh, this is One great. One free soda a day, oh. legally speaking. Anyway, yes, legally. that's Ollie's... I love uh, how you're saying it's legally. No one damn way. I will. I will show you my salt and soda credentials. You don't have. They, there's no credentials. I got credentials. I got awarded that a couple years. What ago. is like the Beyonce like when she gets like the gold Popeyes thing? <laughs> <laughs> You've never heard of that? No. There. Are, yeah. Okay. In the U.S., there are um there. I think there are like seven or eight people that have a gold like card for Popeyes. It's unlimited Popeyes at any location. Beyonce has how, one. How, uh, so like, I, from, I, I want one better. Aside from being Beyonce, how does one qualify to get that? Is it like Charlie and the Chocolate it's, Factory, like random? You have to be invited. Ah. Uh, you got yes. to get the gold card. You so basically, invited. you got to be I Beyonce. Am. You basically, I think. Do we know I, the other seven? I think one used to be like the head of Delta or something like that. It was weird. Beyonce's using that card a lot, Hell yeah! I think so. Yeah, listen, Beyonce eating chicken all the time. Funny enough, let's be honest. Popeyes? On the road, Beyonce eating chicken all the damn time. She's from Houston, bro. <laughs> <laughs> she eating chicken all the time. Funny enough, we we were talking about Destiny's Child, and I was like, yeah, nobody remembers, you know, the other members. <laughs> and you and Brandon like had to break it to me. Yeah. That there were multiple members beyond just the two that I knew. That like and they had been. I remember there was out. three because there was Kelly Rowland, there was Beyonce, and right. then the third one no one remembers. Yeah, because, no, 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 but there was, was but there was like, like two more other Michelle, than that, right? Yeah, Michelle. So and, there was five yeah. originally, or four. No, there's four originally. There's always been four, but the fourth one's been swapped. Right. Yeah. What? I had no See, I thought idea. there was. I yeah. knew there was the three. Look, and Destiny's then, Child is like Destiny's Child is like the church is like one of the you know pillars of our community in the black community. Okay. Got to understand what they, what they went through. Well, what's funny is I was like, "That's bomb." Yeah, that no, joke bombed. For yeah. She hit me with a bus. That's <laughs> okay. You know, what's you've funny, done stand up. Well, no, so I was, I was gonna, used to it. I was gonna back that up because what? I was like, "Yeah, no one even knows who they are." And you, that Brandon, and CJ yeah. were quickly like, "Yeah, this is exactly who they are." I'm like, "Oh, yeah." I guess, I guess that's just me that didn't know who they were. Yeah, how the hell don't you know who? I didn't know. How did you not? How did you not at least remember through the whole Survivor thing of like? What's the, Oh, the um, songs. Um, about yeah. It. No. <laughs> <laughs> I knew. I knew that. I knew there was Kelly, and then I was like, "Oh, I think it's Michelle." Only attract. You're looking at the only ones you found attractive. Yeah. Probably. <laughs> exactly. I would, yeah. yeah. 
That checks I, out. I would yeah. do Kelly, and I would do this one, but I can't remember her name. Yep. Okay, you figured out my ranking system <laughs> and my, my memory techniques. Yeah, I'm a guy. We all, that's yeah. how we always judge it. <laughs> we yeah. do this girl? So yeah, it all started hit you. me with the names, and like Brandon knew all their career moves and stuff. I'm like, oh, okay, I did not know any of this. Yeah, B's good in that, yeah. <laughs> but he also is like a wealth of like random like celebrity and sports knowledge anyway. He's a fat black dude. What do you expect? <laughs> All, he's fat, lost all, weight. all fat black dudes know like random BS like nobody he's, cares about. <laughs> he's lost weight. He's, he does all that walking. I, I, I can't make comments because you know I was going with this. <laughs> yeah, be nice to see you. Also, I know that's where it's headed next. Yeah, it's going. Also, what I did, uh, I actually am proud of myself. <laughs> I decided this year, one of my New Year's uh, resolutions, I was going to write all my friends' letters. Like actual letters? Actual letters. That's I, cool. I actually picked up a whole calligraphy set, started out uh, oh, learning you did, calligraphy. Oh, you were talking about calligraphy. Yeah. Uh, and wrote all my friends' letters, so I have to get addresses. Hey, do you know Christy? Uh, I don't care. Well, I was going to say, she'll teach you, oh. or well, she may not teach you, but she has got she might have insight on calligraphy. Who's Christy? Well, you don't care, so I'm not telling all you. All right, now. then. Yeah. <laughs> Who's Christy? I had a little piece of knowledge for you. I'm ripping it back now. Who's Christy? Uh, I met her through Jesse. I don't know. I'll, I'll connect to you if, she, if she's willing now. She's going to probably see that you're... I'll just call her racist. She'll have to be, <laughs> yeah. she'll, she'll be forced to interact with me. Uh, yeah, sure. I'll help uh, anyway, she's really good at um, like uh, script making and calligraphy and all of that. So, do you use her for any of your, like, your stuff at work? I should. She makes I all the gifs for the show. Yeah, she makes the oh, gifs nice. for the show. Yeah. But uh, just, but I think that's a noble cause. Just, have you have you started calligraphy? Because it's not easy. Uh, yeah, actually, yeah. I've spent a little. I spend a little time on it every day now. Uh, it's yeah. not cheap either. Like when you buy nope, like, the not at all. And the ink. <laughs> yeah. Shit is expensive. Yeah. That's pretty cool. I think that's admirable, and that's something. It, it'll be especially interesting to see what you write. <laughs> yeah, actually, well, I actually got smart this year. I bought a calligraphy pen because I got a promotion at work. Nice. So I'm finally, you know, stop trying to sell the mixtape stuff. So, <laughs> you know, I was like, let me. So when you say calligraphy pen, do you mean like a fountain pen you fill with no, ink, or like an actual, no, like, like an actual like calligraphy that pen that you have to dip in? I have to dip in. That's what I want to use at work. Just trying to sign off on things like that. I want to. I, I, I want to. I, like, I, I, I want to take it back. I want to take. I want to take. I want to take it back like 1900s. I'm tired of. I, I know what it is. I'm kind of getting tired of like social media and everything in general. It's just. Oh, actually, man. yes, I bought one. <laughs> yeah, I did buy one. Awesome. Red stamp. Yeah. Yes. Thank you, yeah. sir. Wax seals. Awesome. You get a little little ribbon there too. To, no, that's to just. Seal it. I don't know what you're on. Um, <laughs> no. It's too far. Yeah, it is. All right. Well, That's I want to update when you send your uh, your first letter, and I want to know who it goes to. And I want oh, it's to, fat uh, CJ. Okay, well that's fair. CJ, we miss you. You've moved to Atlanta. Everyone, thank you for joining us, Ross. I appreciate you showing up. Matt, <clears throat> nice to have you back. Jesse, Dave, thank you so much. You guys. Have oh, I forgot. Real fast. Hi, Christy. Hey. 